Hello, everybody. It's Stacey J. Johnson, and welcome to another episode of Love Rants. I am so excited to have everyone watching, whether you're in Get Vocal. Hi, my Get Vocal family. I really got to call some of them out because I love my Get Vocal family. So we got Miss Tony tonight. We got Myron. We got Leon. We got Keisha. We got Brianna. Oh, my gosh. Who else is in here? We have Frank. We have, oh, who else, who else, who else? Pretty Brown. Thank you so much and so many others. Thank you all, my Get Vocal family, from watching tonight. I really appreciate it. And I also got to say hello to my YouTube family. Hey, YouTube. See, I know y'all over there chatting too, but let me tell y'all, if y'all really want to be involved in the live chat, over here, you got to download getvocal.com or at least get the app. And it's free, all right? I have to also make sure I say, y'all, tip me. If you're in okay. Get Vocal, yes, you get the opportunity to tip me. Yes, you get the opportunity to tip me if you are in Get Vocal. I mean, I'm an independent contractor. So whatever you can do to support this venture, this opportunity to even talk with people like Tara Gates Williams tonight. I mean, gosh, we've had Young Jock on here. We've had Nikki Gilbert Daniels on here. We've had Tawanda Braxton. Please do, please do support, all right? Um, without further ado, I do want to do a couple of other things. Oh, oh, you're asking where is the, how can you tip? You're in Get Vocal only. I'm sorry, YouTube. You can go, there's a V in the chat room. It's a blue V. You, if you click that, that will allow you to tip me, okay? Um, let's see, what else do I want to talk about? Oh, you guys, my show, my book has an audible. So I want to give you the opportunity to listen to the Audible. It's only like a minute. It's not going to be the whole doggone thing. I want you to buy the doggone thing. So it's only a minute. So here, check it out. I'm going to play a little bit of it for you. So if you have Audible, then please download it. Let's see. Okay. Is this thing going to work? Started. Stay tuned. Hold on. Okay, why isn't this why isn't this free thing working here? Hold on. Don't y'all just love when it's live? Oh, there it is. There it is. Wait. Hold on. Why is it not? Oh, wait, I know why. Because I have this thing on do not disturb. One second. Okay. Let's try that again. Um why is this audible not working? Hold on, y'all. Okay, I have no idea why it's not working. That's kind of embarrassing, but oh well. Oh wait, hold on, there's another way I can do it. I always have another option. And if I can't get it together, then okay, I'm not gonna get it, to, I'm, I'm just gonna leave it alone. Shucks. But I think I have something in here. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There it is. Okay, let's see. One guy, you tend to focus on pleasing him. This can make him feel special initially, which is a good thing, right? Well, yes, if he makes you feel special too. But if the guy is not putting the same effort into pleasing you, then two things begin to happen. The first, ironically, is that instead of talking to him about your feelings of disappointment and dissatisfaction, or indicating to him that you feel there's a lack of balance in the relationship, you start to try harder to please him because you don't want to rock the boat. You hypnotize yourself into believing subconsciously that if you just do a little bit more, he will eventually come around and see that he needs to step it up. The second is that the things that you are doing for him no longer seem special. He begins to expect them. Yay! So that's a little bit from my new Audible. You all can download it for free if you are a subscriber for Audible, or you can just get it for $14.95 on Audible. So I'm so excited. So now I'm going to take Miss Tara off of mute because we are about to introduce. You guys, this show means so much to me. You know why tonight? Mm -hmm. Because I do a lot of talking about um, the process. What is the process to meet 
attract, cultivate, and keep healthy romantic relationships. And the truth of the matter is none of us were given the tools to do this, right? None of us, including myself. I've been a constant work in progress, will still be one for the rest of my life. So tonight I have the opportunity to invite Tara Gates, Mrs. Tara Gates Williams on the show. And she's going to be talking about process because process is so important. There's a process to anything, everything, including love. So how did she really, how did she, how did Tara get to her I do? It came from respecting the process. Now, do I know her process? Absolutely. What I do know is everybody's process is different. So what I want to do is invite Tara to the platform right now. Tara. Hi, Tara. Hi, Hi everybody. Look, I've been over here running, running my mouth. Stacey had me on mute. I was I talking know. about on Instagram, but I told them to follow you and get on here on Get Vocal so they can really be engaged in this really great conversation. So thank yes, you for yes, I'm so excited to have you. So Tara, I just want to give a little bit of your accolades from a business standpoint, of course. Thank Tara you. is a, a media a media and entertainment brand strategist. Did I get that right? Yes, and I dabble in the sports industry. I dabble with businesses. And so I have different divisions to my company. But yes, ma'am, yes. You, you just on. started another one called TG Unified. TGA Unified? No, it's right? always been TGA Unified. But okay. I've been blessed to have opportunities where I, I have different divisions. I have di business division where I work with different businesses, corporations. I started, I launched a sports division last year. And wow. in a couple of months, I'll be, probably next month, I'll be launching my mental health division because I've had so many mental health therapists reach out to me and want to connect. And I've been able to, to do a lot of great things. So I'll have that division. So, yeah. I love it. I love it. So let's get it started. So tonight, the topic is just married, the power I found when I honored the process. Yes. And I want to, before we go, because I want to get into, I want people to really get a full picture of what we're talking about, you guys. This is only the audio, but it's an audio from her husband, Bache Williams, and what he posted this on um, Instagram. So hold on. All the things I thought I wanted were not what I needed. I no longer want to imagine dating a woman without knowing what I perceive as your deficiencies. Mm. So you guys can't see it, but I really wanted you to hear that beginning part. I mean, this is the most beautiful video, marriage mm. video I've ever seen. You guys, make sure you go to my Instagram page and watch it. And also, Tara, let's tell them what your YouTube page is because you have it up on there now, right? Yeah, I have a YouTube page, Tara Gates Anderson, because I haven't switched it, but you, you may be able to find Tara Gates Williams because I switched it today. I'm not on there a lot. I'm mainly on Instagram, which is Tara Gates Williams and Tara Gates Williams on Facebook. Okay. Okay. And I also want to make sure, I want to read something from Bache's page. And the reason why is it, it's telling for women, I believe, because we concentrate so much on what's not available for us as single women, when really the love that you all share together is, I want women to know that that love is not just available for Tara, Mrs. Tara Gates Williams, that love is available to us all. So yeah. I'm going to read what Bache posted. Um, and I don't know, was this the day I don't know. Was it the day of the wedding or? Um, well, I, what does it say? When you, so it, says, you, it, you are, it says you are God's timing. You are God's answer. You are God's response to who is she? Where is she? And how will she be? You are the results of faith, prayers and practice. Since I met you, my life has changed. Your words, your smile, your heart, your voice, and your presence has elevated my soul. I vow to continue to learn you, unlearn parts of me while relearning how to love. I was born to excel in all things and finally get to excel in all things God has called a husband to be. Although we will have tons of fun, loving you will be no laughing matter. I'm not promising perfection, but I vow to always stay connected and remember that God made you for me. Honoring you is honoring God. 
The past is the present. The future will be what it will be. Always know for sure I will be present for you and me. Thank you for helping me, Nicholas. See me as a husband. Wow. But Shay so, will. Go okay, ahead. so I just have to say, I give Misty when I hear it because those were his wedding vows to me. Mm -hmm. That's what he read to me at the altar. That's, those were his personal vows to me. And the last part is thank you for letting, thank you for letting Nicholas, which is our son, his son, mm -hmm. um, see me as a husband. Wow. So yeah, it was, thank you for reading that and sharing. Absolutely. Those were so special, special to me. So let me start. I want to start at the beginning because when we're talking about the process, a lot of times women, we think that the process started before you met Bache, like the week before, the month before, the year before. The process, I believe, started when you were a little baby, didn't even know oh. what love was going to be in your life, didn't understand what it was going to be. But what had love been like for you prior to you meeting and marrying Bache? What had love been to you? For you love had been everything it was supposed to be so when i got to this point i could truly be present and appreciate the love and recognize and know that i deserve the love that basha gives me because mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of times we we push stuff off we don't know how to digest it because we've had so many bad experiences and i really don't want to say bad experiences just learning experiences mm -hmm. um so prior to that, you know, I, I'm, I, I was divorced years ago when my daughter was one years old. So I was married when I had Ava um, and I was in, you know, re uh, relationships, some long term relationships and some unhealthy relationships. <laughs> you know, you know what you go through in your 20s, you're learning um, <laughs> in your 30s. Um, so I had been, you know, I'd been in committed relationships, but not always were those relationships committed to me. Um, so I went through a lot of ups and downs and I have to take accountability. One thing that I have learned throughout life that I have to take accountability. I can't sit here and say, oh, he did this or that man did that or this is what happened. I have to take accountability because, you know, sometimes I stayed longer than I should have. Sometimes I settle for things that I shouldn't have. So, you know, my love journey has been, um, you know, tumultuous at times, but also uh, a, a really, really great learning experience mm -hmm. for me um, in in life. And I and part of that, you know, I had a very loving family, so you know, I was loved at home. I had great relationship with family, um, brothers, my dad, my mom, everybody. Um, but you know, when you're young and in love, you make mistakes and you do, you know, settle for things you shouldn't. So. That journey taught me a lot. It made me stronger. It revealed a lot to me about myself. Um, one thing is that I've always tried to do is be a reflective person, right? Really look at, okay, you know, what was I supposed to learn in that situation? It didn't go the way I should, it should, I thought it should have gone. But had I, you know, continued to do some of the things, if I didn't start changing who I was, I wouldn't receive who God made for me. Let me so ask think, you this, Tara. You spoke, and I want to, I might be interjecting, but I, as a coach for the last eight years, I, there's a couple of, I want to make sure when women are listening and looking at this, they really take some, uh, 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 they feel a bit of their personal journey. And yeah. what I want you to um, talk and, and dive a little deeper into is mm -hmm. the journey and dating. Because what I, what I'm hearing is that you allowed yourself to have relationships. And a lot of times women think that, oh, okay, I'm going to take three years off, two years off, five years off. When I'm ready, God's just going to bring him to me. And I always say, absolutely, we want you to heal, but you have to date. And it seems like you allowed yourself to date. And I want you to tell us, because you already kind of had said basically, those relationships made you better and gave you a clearer foundation of what you want. And you never just took five years off from dating. I'm just not, you know, tell us about that part. Well, well I, I will be honest, Stacey. I, I did take some time off. Well, but time off I is different, but did you take like, yeah, like some women will take five, six years, three years, intentionally taking themselves mind, body, and soul off 
the opportunity to be approached. Did you do that? If you did, share, please. Oh, absolutely, I did. I did. I was in a, a, a long-term relationship. Um, and when I got out of that, I started to do a lot of self-reflection. I started, uh, I, I took a discipleship program to really, really commit. I always had a great relationship with God, but you know, sometimes we see saw and waver. And I got back into that through that discipleship program, went through it for 10 months, really got my relationship good. Back How long did you take off Tara? I'm sorry. I want to be clear. Probably about three years. Wow. I'm going to be completely honest. And then tell um, us what you did during those three years. So it's not yeah. just because if you're taking time, that length of time off specifically, yeah. it's not just you think you're just going to wake up and say, OK, now I'm ready. And God is going to oh. deliver a man to you. Yeah. Those three years I did my discipleship program to get my life right back with Christ. And then I really, really dug into my business to build it even more. Mm -hmm. um, then I was like, you know what? I'm not date. I'm not. I'm not going to get married. I'm just going to be single the rest of my life. Like I really was resigned to relationship wow. because you know, I, you know, I, you you go out, you meet people, people approach you, and those kind of things. And it was just like, oh, I don't have time for that anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm not settling for that anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't deserve that anymore. So I'm not going to give that my energy. So Stacy, to be honest, I got resigned to relationship. Said I was going to be single, and then I remember in 2018. It was almost like I had this, this, I was like, I have love to give. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that I was lonely or any of those things. I was dating Netflix for a little while and then I was dating my work for a little while. Mm -hmm. But I said, you know what? I have, I am so at peace with myself and knowing who I am with all the work that I did put in to my relationship with God and put into myself. Mm -hmm. I said, I want to share and give this love to the man that God created for me because I know that we're not meant to be alone. I know that God has someone for me mm -hmm. and knowing that I know who I am now, you know what? I deserve to give this love that I have to someone. Do you, that was, you would have gotten to that place without the intentional um, growing process of no. Tara. That's what I think not I wanna make sure we, we are clear because when I say ladies, taking time off, the time is not going to deliver anything different. That's what I'm, I'm trying to really say. Yes, you're so right, Stacey. You just can't take off, chill at home and be like, oh, he's gonna come knock on the door. Or, oh, you know, it's been a while, I've been off the scene, I can go step out to the club. No, you have to do self work, internal work, yes. to really help you understand what you have to give. And what I, one message I do definitely want to leave women with, it's about what you have to give, not what a man has to mm -hmm. give you. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like if you become all of the things that you desire, you'll attract all of those things you desire. So yes, you do have to do self-work. Uh, coaching is great. Getting your relationship back with Christ, joining some programs or, or, or courses at church or what, like what you have to offer, Stacey. So like, it's doing some work that's really going to help you evolve and become the love you want to give. Yeah. And I, I feel like when you get in that place, it, it's something that we'll touch on as the conversation grows. When you get in that place, you're at peace. And when you're at peace, you don't get in this place of this rush, mm -hmm. right? This, this, this pressing rush to get out there. You're not in that place or for somebody to come to you. You just go in, in situ certain situations and do different things where things will come to you. The rush will come to you. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, I just want, don't rush. The rush will come to you. I spoke the rush about that. Will come to you. But that's so important because when you get prepared, it's almost like when they say it's better to be in position than get in position. Yes. I was in such a place of, full of love that I had to give and knew how I wanted to give it and knew what I had to give. So when the right man came to me, I would be able to discern that he was sent from God and I'm not going to be any kind of in, in any kind of rush, but I know the love I have to give. And I know when I recognize who God had for me, I'm able to fully give it freely and without fear. Let's talk about giving. Cause I love how you spoke about giving. I always tell women, you know, it's okay if you, have, um, I, I always teach this whole character traits list, but yeah, you have yeah. to the responsibility of being the trait that you want to attract. So if you want a person who is dependable, then you have mm -hmm. to be willing to give dependability. 
right? Absolutely. What do you think Absolutely. about that? I think it's true. You can't ask someone to give you something or look for all these things in someone and you're none of those things. Mm -hmm. Because here's the thing, it, even if that person is all those things and you're not in that reciprocity mindset, they'll give, it, but it will fall short. It will not be recognized. That person will formulate some type of feelings and it won't work. So you have to be what you're searching for because it's something magical that happens when you're meeting a person and you're able to give to the point that they're able to receive it. Because yes. I'm going to be honest, it got to a point at one point when I was so resigned to relationship, I couldn't even receive a compliment. I couldn't. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I couldn't even receive it because I almost didn't believe it. Because of everything was that had happened before, like, mm -hmm. because Tara, I mean, you're successful, you're gorgeous. I met you and you literally, I still got the hats in my closet that you gave me years ago. <laughs> and y'all, these ain't no yeah. hats. These are some really cute hats. <laughs> I'm serious. She is the hat queen. So yes. you you weren't able to receive a compliment from a man? Oh, it was, it was hard. It was like, I, do I deserve that? Am I, am I that? Nah, mm -hmm. stop. Wow. You know, it, what do they say? They call it imposter syndrome, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like you, you, you don't feel worthy of those things. And until I realized what I was worth, I wasn't able to receive. Mm -hmm. So you can say you want those people to, to have all those things all day long. But if you don't know your worth and you're not in that reciprocity mindset, yes. you're not going to receive it. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, the next question is, I want to talk about the images of romantic love as a child that you had. I know because I also talk about this rewriting your love story. I believe that we were all born with the love story and that subconsciously implants itself in our heads. And as kids, we then as adults become puppets of what we were taught or what not even intentionally taught, what we saw as children, the music we listened to, all of that. How was your... What images of romantic love did you see as a child that you know influenced as a high school student to a college student influenced how you loved initially before you went through this um, this this transformation during that time off from dating? Well, you know, my, my grandparents were married forever, right? Mm -hmm. um, I used to spend time with them every summer. So I was always around... Um, you know, a household that, you know, people were married. I was all around, I was always around marriage, you know. Um, even though my my biological parents were divorced when I was five, my dad was always in my life, you know. And my mom got remarried and still to this day, with like 40 years. So it's like, I've always had that presence of marriage and relationship in my life. Mm -hmm. So of course you're, you're going out, right? When you, as you're growing, oh, I want that. But you have to also realize the things that come with that. And if you're not emotionally prepared or, or emotionally stable and those, and not that I wasn't, but you know, in your twenties, you're immature, right? Mm -hmm. So you can't go out on your twenties, but it's marriage and you know nothing about marriage. So some of us can't um, even go out in the forties or the thirties or fifties because they still might not know nothing about marriage, but go ahead. I'm sorry. I digress. True. True. So, you know, I always had, you know, relationship, you know, present, marriage present from grandparents on up. So, you know, in, in that influence that, you know, when I was growing up, like, you know, uh, have a relationship, you know, have a, a committed relationship. Mm -hmm. But I think in your 20s, so you ask for a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and even though I was in, in um, relationships in my 20s, I, I wasn't. You know, I didn't know enough. You know what I mean? I got married actually at 26. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't know enough about marriage to be that's married. your first marriage, though, not to Bache. I want to make sure as people that's are clear. Okay. That was my first marriage right. to, you know, when I had Ava, Ava's father. So I didn't know enough about marriage. And we were married one year because I was always kind of like, you know, the ice queen. Like, you want some foolishness? I'm out. Uh -huh. You know, so, you know, when my marriage ended, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Everything after that, I was just I was no nonsense with stuff. Mm -hmm. I was no nonsense. So um, 
I just became, I, well, you know, I think it was my relation. I had a long, long relationship in college that kind of made me no nonsense because after that ended and I got married and some things happened in my marriage, it, I was no nonsense after that. Mm -hmm. So it was just like getting cut off. Off. So um, I didn't know enough about marriage back then to really be married. And I think, you know, uh, you know, uh, after that, after my marriage was over, I just went into the no nonsense mode. Like, yeah, I, yeah. You know, what's interesting, so, Tara, what's great about what you shared about the relationships of your family. Like you said, everybody was married. Even your mother's second marriage, it's been like for 40 mm -hmm. years. So what's great mm -hmm. is you saw those relationships happening that lasted. So my question yeah. is, and this is a question because this, this just basically came from what you just said. So do you think that with seeing those, you knew exactly how you wanted it to look and never asked yourself, but that was still their relationships. So you were, mm -hmm. you were saying, oh no, you became ice cream. Oh no, this ain't, mm -mm, because this isn't what I saw rather than asking yourself initially, what you what you wanted it kind of goes yes. back to that puppet thing do you think that's what was happening you never asked yourself well shit i mean my grandmama got this my mom over here got but what does tara want do you think it was because of that one of the reasons was because you didn't ask yourself what does tara want in your 20s what means something what is love to tara and you were trying to it, it, go ahead to be totally transparent that my grandparents marriage wasn't always happy mm -hmm. My, my mom, my mom, and my when she got her, their marriages weren't always happy. So that was kind of a reflection, like, oh, yeah, I ain't going for that either. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't always about me asking. I didn't know enough to ask what I wanted. I knew enough to know what I wasn't going to deal with. Mm -hmm. So oh, that's good. It was, that again. <laughs> I didn't know enough to say this is what I wanted, but I knew enough to know that this is I wasn't going to deal with this. So I saw you know, examples of things that my parents went through in marriage and stuff that I would, I, I ain't nobody standing around for that, you know, and I'm not judging them because they, they come from an era and a time where you just did, you, you stay married, mm -hmm. you know? So I saw both sides of it, but I also, you know, as I got older and the times were changing, I knew what I wasn't going to deal with. So, so how became, did you become clear? This is the process. So you all, again, we're talking about how Tara Gates Williams honored the process. I know like Williams, how she honored the process and how she found her power in honoring the process. So we're starting, I always believe again, for everyone who just joined in, we are product of where we come from. So what she said basically is, hey, mom, grandma, everybody had a relationship, but it wasn't always peaches and cream. And what she decided was she was going to on her process. When did you say, okay, that over there, I don't want that over there. I don't want and this shit I created in the middle. I don't even want that. When did your mind say, I need to switch my process and do something different? I'm going to be completely honest. Mm -hmm. My dad, your dad, my dad, I have to give my dad a hundred percent of the acknowledgement and recognition because my dad always gave me wisdom and advice. Mm -hmm. Every relationship that I was in, I would call him for advice when things weren't going the way they should. And his message was always do what's best for you. Mm -hmm. If someone is not acknowledging and doing what's best, you have to take hold of your life and do what's best for you. Mm -hmm. And I mean, every relationship, my dad was there. My, I got stood up for prom, honey. You got stood and up for prom? No, I, I got stood up for prom. Over there. Okay. I got stood up for prom. I had crimps in my hair and everything. <laughs> and I got stood up for prom. And I remember calling my dad crying. Wow. And my dad just started laughing. I'm like, what you laughing at? He said, baby. Why are you upset? I said, I love him. You know, you think you're going to be with your high school boyfriend forever, right? Yes, honey. So, so I was like, but I love him. He just started laughing. He said, do you know how many times you're going to fall in love? He was like, this is just the beginning. Be happy he did not show up. Mm. Y'all hear that? Be happy and he I'm lied to you, ladies. Be happy he cheated on you. Be happy he wasn't dependable. Because, Be happy because, because you know, 
Because you know what he said after that? He said, yeah. now you get to make a choice. You get to make a choice. Now you get to make a choice. Yeah. And those are the things that never left me throughout my entire life of a relationship. When someone chooses to do something, mm -hmm. you get to make a choice. Mm. So it was almost like my dad was telling me, you can never blame anybody but yourself if you're going through something that you don't deserve. Mm. So shout out to my dad. Love you, dad. So, so like that is that wisdom that my dad gave me throughout life really helped. And I even watched my dad in relationship and, you know, nothing bad to my dad. He was kind of a womanizer here and there, you know, after Girl, my parents my dad were divorced. Was too, so, oh well. so after my parents were divorced. So I saw that too. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I saw that the womanizing too. And that I ain't gonna lie, it kind of school to help me, you know, be more aware of some things, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but, um, you know, that is what I really want women to understand that you get to make a choice. Mm -hmm. When somebody does something, when they make decisions or whatever they do, the choice is in your hands. So that is how I started moving forward. And, you know, in certain after my especially after my marriage, like I'm the ice queen now. I get to make a choice. Mm -hmm. If I stay around for this foolishness, it's because I chose. Mm -hmm. You know, because here's the thing. People are going to tell you things and in, 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 in run game to make you stay or try to, to draw you in. But if their behavior is such you have to watch that behavior. That was something else my dad would tell me. He's like, you got to watch the actions. They're not going to match the words. You got to listen with your eyes and your ears. So and even when I stayed with certain people, like, you know, back college days, if they, if they cheated and I stayed, my dad would always say, they're going to do it again. Mm. Mm. And everybody's not the same lady. So I don't want to say. to say. So if a man cheats on you, do you believe that? I mean, and this is the evolved Tara, not the Tara from back in the day. Do you believe that he's yeah. always a cheater? No, I don't believe he's always a cheater, but I do believe that you have to look at where someone is in their life. Mm -hmm. You have to look at, you know, their phases to this. Mm -hmm. You have to look at where they are, what's going on in their lives and, and, and what's happening. What's the rationale for cheating? What, you know what I mean? So, um, and not that there's justification, okay? So understand what I'm saying. It's different between justification and rationale. So it's like, it's not that there's a justification for what they're doing, but you have to, to have this understanding like, okay, is this something I'm going to deal with? Is he going to do it again? Like, it, it depends on where you are in relationship. Mm -hmm. but, you know, my dad, I'm going to have to say, my dad, big influence when it came to that. Because, you know, mothers and daughters, I love my mom. She would give me advice, but me and her were so close mm -hmm. that, it's more of a passionate thing. Like, you know, I don't know why you don't, you know, you know how moms are. Mm -hmm. And dads had that calming wisdom. All right, babe, you know, what you gonna do? You get to make a choice now, mm -hmm. it's on you. And what's interesting is we all have the opportunity to choose again. And for some reason why as women, we feel like, and I, I believe it's more of the fear of starting over that stops us from saying, I can get out of this. I can leave tomorrow, but the fear, false evidence appearing real, and it's your girlfriends and told you, ain't no good men, ain't it's it's nineteen thousand men to one woman. I mean, I mean nineteen thousand women to one man. All of those statistics that mean nothing because, ladies, guess what? Tara Gates, Mrs. Tara Gates Williams just got married. So all them people out there telling you ain't no good men out there. Uh, yes, it is because she got her one. All right. So hold on. I got to say something because you know your husband is over here in his, his chat room. Oh, yeah. Look, let me so, on. Let me so, on. Wait, so I asked the question when did you decide to move through and, and start the process of when, you know, he says when you heard his prayers. What does he mean by that? Because he ain't on the show and we ain't going to call him, but he's a man and he's your husband. So I got to ask, what does he mean by that when he says you heard his prayers? Huh. He's I heard his prayers. Yes. I don't know, babe. You got to chime in. I don't know. No, no. Oh, 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 okay. Hold on. Further down yes. in the chat room, he says, Yes, she did. Prayers aren't always overt in their presence. Got it. <laughs> so, what Shay is talking about literally the energy of the person probably he was showing you he was. And, yeah. and tell, do you get, do you understand? You, I, I, I'm not calling you to the room, Bashay. This is not, 
but she ain't. He said, he said, I pray for my wife, her spirit is. So he, I want to go back to something you just said, Stacey yes. Jane, because I got to be very clear. Yes. I don't care how many men there are to woman, women. Yes. If you're that woman, that man will find you. Yes. That man, you will be aligned with that man. So I really want women to get care. It's not be, it's not a shortage of men. That's right. Who are you being to attract the man that God has for you? This is about you. This isn't about, oh, if it were less women, I'd have a chance. No. If you are who God, uh, uh, you know, created you to be as a wife. So see, here's another thing. I, I got to go into this. I start, when I said to myself, Stacy, I was like, okay, you know what? I have so much to give. I have this love to give. I want to give it, but how do I give it as a wife? Because I'm not about to give it as a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm. I'm not about to give it as your bae. I, I. You know. I even. I even told Bashay. You know. I remember when, when when we became exclusive. He was like, "Well, you know, how do you want me to introduce you?" As my, I was like, "Oh, I'm not anybody's girlfriend." Mm. And it, it just introduced me as Tara. See, because the only title that I'm worthy of, worthy of is wife. Mm. So. I'm not going to sit here and be a girlfriend or a boo or a bae when I know what I who I am. Mm -hmm. And I remember, you know, someone asked me this not too long ago. I remember just saying, you know, I started researching biblically what it meant to be a wife. Mm. Because if I am preparing myself, I need to know what how I need to be prepared. Like, who do I need to be? What does it mean to be a wife? What do I you know, what are the what are the qualities I need to have? So I started focusing more on me and what it meant to be a wife and who I needed to be as a wife. What does God mean? What, it, what does it mean in God's eyes to be a wife? Then I just started operating that way. I started I started moving that way. I moved mm -hmm. different. So it wasn't about, oh, I'm looking for a man. I'm trying to find me a man or find me a husband. It was like, uh, let me figure out who, what kind of wife I need to be because then I'll attract the man God has for me. That part, that part, that, and I'm about to have, I'm about to start shouting because I, <laughs> no, really, because that I had to take a moment. Cause I was like, these people going to think I'm crazy. If you get out the chair and start shouting, Yeah, you, you can't do that. Then you got to stay in the frame, but let me yeah, tell yeah. y'all this. She just yeah. gave y'all the sauce. She <laughs> gave y'all the sauce. And, and I think that that's, you know, I, you know, I'm going to be honest, Stacey, like after we, Cause we we never posted anything about being in a relationship mm -hmm. or anything. I'm real big on privacy and protecting privacy and just having peace, protecting my peace. And I remember after we put announced, I got a busload of DMs, text messages, phone calls, and everything. And they went from "How'd you get your husband?" I want to know, like I had a recipe or something, mm. or I didn't even know you were dating. How did you that what happened? You know, because we're in this age of everybody got to know everybody's move. It's a play by play, right? Mm -hmm. And then I started getting messages about I was in a two-year relationship. I just had two failed relationships. You know, can I talk to you because I'm having relationship problems and struggles? And people were like, you know, I want love too. And it got really serious. And then I was like, you know, I was talking to Bashe about it and I started praying. I started really, really praying, like. God, use me as you see fit to be able to help people and answer questions. But the thing was, the the, the theme that I would always come out when I would talk to women was, who are you being in the midst of all of this? Who are you? Be accountable for you. Mm -hmm. You know, you want all these qualities in a man, going back to what we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. What are you those qualities? What is it you can create yourself to be to attract what you want? Mm -hmm. And when I started really doing that self-work from 2015, to be honest, to 2018, 2015, 16, I was like, eh, I'm good. 2018 came around and I was like, OK, God, I'm I'm ready to give and share my love with someone. But you know what? Ugh, God will give you a test. Hmm. So when ladies, when you say men, even when you say, oh, I'm ready, I have stuff to give. You know me, I'm like, okay, I got it. I got to figure it out now. I'm I got it, up. God. Where is he? Where is he? I know. It was like, don't give him to me. So God said, you really ready? Let me let me throw you this test. Mm. He threw me a test. 
but you know what? The beauty of it, y'all. This is the beauty Wait, of it. The test was someone else, not Bache. Or was well, yeah, I, 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 I was seeing someone else for a brief period of okay. time, and all through that, I was just like, it, yeah, this not my husband. <laughs> so wait, but you so how to, did you know it was a test though that's good information Tara part of the process how did you because know because nothing was aligned about us nothing was aligned about us it was all about fun see here's the thing it was it, it was almost like you know I hadn't done anything for a long time gone out done anything been social done anything I'm ready now right so I'm going to get out there and put myself out there but it's all about fun you know, going out, doing things, traveling, doing, you know, having all this fun. Mm -hmm. But when you sit down and have this conversation, an honest conversation with somebody, you know, right off the bat. Mm -hmm. So then you didn't oh. date. So that person came, the test came, but you didn't date him because you immediately knew, oh, this is a test. God. Oh, okay. I dated because I, I was having fun, right? Got it. Okay. Oh, but you knew. Okay. And when you knew, when that, when that, when you cut it. Oh, absolutely. Because I'm not going to be, I didn't want to be unfair to anyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to use anyone, you know, and mm -hmm. I felt like, oh, I got to that point. So let me check my, this is not fair. I, I don't want to waste anybody's time. I know that they're looking for something more. This isn't it. But the beauty of it is at that point, God was like, thank you for discerning. Mm -hmm. Thank you for discerning. Yeah. The, the, the test is over. Yes. And let me, that's when mm -hmm. I knew I had to like pull back. So Tara, let me ask you this, and this is totally off uh, of my questions that I had lined up, but I got to ask this. So, because I got to follow my spirit. So when you knew that wasn't the person, how did you get the courage to, because a lot of times women will wait for the floor to fall out to say, oh, it, it, he's not the one, instead of honoring what they want. Where did the courage come from to say, that's not the one. And because a lot of times you can meet great guys, but great guys that are not for you, right? They're, they're on the path for someone else. How did you say, how did you find the courage within yourself to then, without anything bad happening, say, that's not the one and keep moving? Well, well, well the, the thing is, and I don't know if it was so much courage as respect mm -hmm. because... I, I, I don't want to waste anyone's time. I don't want to be unfair to anyway, He was a great guy, really nice guy. We wanted different things in life. I knew it wasn't, you know, we weren't aligned. So I, I'm, I, I, I respect, I want to respect Facts. the person because I would want someone to respect me. It's not rejection, it's respect. Mm -hmm. So when you're in a place and able to receive that, then you don't have any problem sharing that. So when you say respect, Tara, what do you mean? Tell me, because that. Oh, I, well, it would be it would be disrespectful for me to continue to have dating fun. I have no intention. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm not 20 anymore. Mm -hmm. You know well, what I'm we saying? Look at, we look at, we look at, and, and just. Oh, honey, I need that light you got over at your house, honey. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's 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 about the, the fairness. See, here's the thing. And, and, it, and I'm not saying all women. As women, and I've been here, so I, this is why I can speak on it. Mm -hmm. You gotta, you you can't be in a space afraid to let go of something because you think you'll never have anything. I got to speak in tongues on that. Woman, let us what? Girl, girl, yeah. So, so that's the thing. This show. Hey, like, that's it. If y'all got that. Y'all, y'all, y'all get your drink. We need to sip on that. Girl, we gonna drink on that one. Uh -huh. So, so if you're in that place, Ooh. you can't, just like the story I told, uh, like the story I told, it's okay to be thirsty. Just don't be parched. Yeah. I don't know if you were there for that story. Tell us, story, and Tara. I'm going to be really quick. Yeah. So, um, you know, I was was on a panel at one time. Well, I was on a, another show, and it came up, and people were the 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 person, the host, uh, K, Kicks and Giggles show was asking me, say, hey, what is this thirsty? What is your your take on being thirsty? I said, oh, ain't nothing wrong with being thirsty. Just don't be parched. When you are thirsty, ladies, men, you get to choose what you drink. So if mm. I say I'm thirsty, I get to drink a little bit of. Uh, I could drink from from some orange juice. Uh, a soda water 
in your when you're thirsty in a relationship, you get to take a little, you get to take a drink of dating, you get to take a drink of hanging out with somebody, you get to take a drink of love, you get to take a drink of affection. When you are parched, you will guzzle down anything. Exactly. And I'm gonna tell you a quick story. When I was very little, I remember I was at work with my mom. She worked at a, a, a men's clothing store and I was at work waiting on her to get off. I was probably nine and or, or eight or something like that. And I kept telling her, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty. And you know, when you're little, you can't wait, right? You're, you're impatient. You want to drink something. Mm -hmm. She's like, sit down in the back. I'm going to be off in a minute. We'll get something. Just sit down. She told me no, like three times. I was so thirsty that I just was bugging her. I remember seeing her come back into her, her, her work from being outside and set down a Dr. Pepper can. And I was like, I don't believe she got, got something to drink. And I've been telling her I've been thirsty all this time. <laughs> so I went up to where she was, took that Dr. Pepper can and started drinking the Dr. Pepper can. But what happened was I got a mouthful of ashes because she used it as an ashtray out front. Wow. And I said, mommy. And I just, you know, I had all these ashes in my mouth. And so she said, you walking around here like you being parched. I had an old school mama, so it wasn't no time out, be cute. You walk around here like you parched. And I was like, what is parched? Me? <laughs> like, I'm like, what is parched? She's like, you dying. You mm. think you're you dying if you don't get something to drink. And it was almost like, that's what you get. Mm. So ladies, men, here's the thing. When you're thirsty, you get to choose. Mm. When, when you parched, you will end up with a mouthful of ashes. Mm. Because you're going to be guzzling down what you think is something that's going to quench your thirst, and it will be nowhere near it. Woo! Those are the bad decisions. Those are the, I'm going to stay and stick around. Those are the, you know, oh, he going to change. Wake up. And in the words of my dad, always do what's best for you. Mm. Don't be walking around here parched. Mm. Don't do it. Don't do it. To yourself. Mm. Don't do it to yourself. So yeah. <laughs> so then, okay, so, okay, so I want to cut in and, and, and make sure because we're ending, we're coming to the end. This is so bad. So, but what's great about this, you all? Well, those of you who are, who are part of my Patreon inner circle, you all get Tara after the show for some extended time. Now, those of you who aren't a member of my inner circle, my I want a good man university inner circle. Well, it's gonna cut off about nine ten for y'all. But you know who you are. Those focus females who are part of my subscription base, $10 a month on Patreon. We're going to have more of Tara and we're going to be talking about feminine energy, living inside of your body versus outside of your body, allowing versus controlling. That's the after the show. But I don't know if y'all remember that. So anyway, I digress. And, and can, can I can I just add? No, go ahead, Stacey. Yes. Yeah. So wait, I want to before we end, and I want to Tara. I got it. I know I ain't supposed to do this, but y'all, Tara has this event coming up that I'm. A, I have already got my ticket for, and I am a VIP. Y'all know. So I need her to tell us about that. But before we do that, Tara, and I got a surprise mm. for you that you don't even know. I've been over here in the um the oh. chat room doing, oh. but. I want you to talk about, before we leave, I want you to talk about, you told me that you dated the process, you engaged the relationship, and you married the promise. What did you mean yeah. by that? So dating the process, it's like, there's a process you go through when you meet someone or you're out putting yourself out there. You know, you, one, the process, you're being vulnerable, right? You're, mm -hmm. you're being open. And that was, you know, hard for me long ago, but now here I am, I know that I'm a wife mm -hmm. and I want to give that to someone. So I need to be vulnerable and, and, and show those things about me so people can see the wife in me, not as a manipulation thing, mm -hmm. as a genuine thing, because that's who I truly am. Mm -hmm. So dating that process, the whole process of being vulnerable and open and not afraid of anything, mm -hmm. not afraid of rejection, not afraid of somebody saying no, not afraid of whatever, just being open to that mm -hmm. when you're dating. Mm -hmm. uh, now, engaged in the relationship, when I got in a relationship, I had to be more engaged. It wasn't about, oh, I'm watching every move they make, <laughs> just See if they're going to do this and that's it. That's what I'm going to marry. No, I'm going to be engaged and I'm going to be doing those things that I said I would do. Mm -hmm. Now someone says, oh, I want to be in a committed re relationship with you. And so I need to show my same level of commitment. Mm -hmm. It's about what I had to give. Mm -hmm. 
And in doing those things, mm -hmm. you get married to the promise. Yes. You receive the promise that God has for you when you say true, when you stay true and authentic mm -hmm. to who you are and what you have to give without the worry of fear or be, being hurt or anything. Uh, one book that changed my life was The Four Agreements. Yes. When you don't take anything personal, mm -hmm. make no assumptions, stay true to your word. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember the other one, Stacey, help me out. You, you operate differently. Yes. I have to move differently internally so people can see me different externally. Mm -hmm. Say that again. So I had to move different internally so people can see me different externally. Mm -hmm. Nobody's in my head. So if I'm doing the internal work, everything that I do for my actions and my words and all those things, everybody that can't read my mind can see my through my actions who I am. So the four agreements, I just want to support you with this, Tara. The four agreements are be impeccable with your word. Mm -hmm. Don't take anything personally. Yeah. Don't make assumptions and always do your best. Exactly. Those are the four agreements. That okay. book changed my life, That especially the don't take it personal part. Mm -hmm. And so doing all of those things, you know, I knew because Bashe and I were aligned on so many different levels that we were speechless at times. And that's you know, I, I knew. And oh, I want to say this. I was never afraid to say not yet or no mm -hmm. to any relationship um, or any situation. And 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 I remember uh, um, I don't want to give all the juice away. But, you know, I got to a point in, in, in certain relationship where I was like, ah, you know what? You're not ready for me. And, and some of my girls were like, girl, what you you better you better grab hold of that man. You better. Mm -hmm. We have to be afraid as uh, unafraid as women to say not yet. Stop looking at a man like, oh, he gonna be whatever. So I'm gonna go ahead and if dating somebody's not what is it, dating the um dating dating is so, dating yeah yeah. If, if you clearly see that somebody's not ready for you, why would you engage in the relationship? If they're not ready, they're not gonna be able to engage back with you in the relationship, and you'll never reach the promise. And then, so, then you'll tell yourself because you are that ain't no good man out there just yeah. because of him when he's already being honest with who he is. Period. Exactly. So don't sell yourself your own hoop dreams. Mm -hmm. You have to be real and not be afraid to say not yet. Exactly. Dating the potential, Shoshana says. Dating the potential. Yeah. That's exactly what I was listening for. Y'all okay, so, both of them, yeah. So hold on. So I want to, because we do have the 930 and I know we've been talking a lot with the inner circle that I want a good man university ladies, but I want to talk about this. I, I want to do my surprise, but before we go, I want to talk about the design your destiny. It's a declaration vision board event. Now I already got my VIP tickets. So it's October 10, um, yeah. 11 AM Eastern standard time, but I, the VIP is sold out, right? Yeah, so it's a virtual event. Yeah. So we have people signed up from California to, to DC. Mm -hmm. But um um I may be opening up some VIP because I've been getting so many text messages and inbox just girl open up the thing in and on Zoom. I, it's it's going to be on Zoom, but I may open up VIP just for your your circle. Stacey. Yes, yes. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So then maybe hold on, hold on, y'all. Look, this is the business one for me. So can we have a special code for my people? We'll come up with a it, that, that special code is going to be Love Rants. Love Rants. And, oh, okay. And if, if they would have to uh, DM me on Instagram. Yes. And this oh, y'all follow her, Tara. Give us yeah, follow Tara Gates Williams on Instagram. Follow me and DM me if you're interested in being VIP at the event. Yes. But the um, Design Your Destiny Declaration Vision, Vision Board event, October 10th, 11 to 2, virtual event on Zoom. What's and, and, and we just added a special Friday night pre party hmm. for VIPs. Y'all not going to be ready for this, honey. Y'all not going to be ready for this. We got some special stuff coming okay. for VIP on Friday night before the vision board event on Saturday. But I just quickly, Stacey, I want to share with everybody that in 2018, I designed a vision board for my husband, mm -hmm. for my purpose in life, 
and for my business. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying I got the blueprint, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm saying I have something that will bl bless you. Keyword declaration. Mm -hmm. That is something that's going to set your vision board, our vision boards apart. Something I did in 2018 and that I committed to doing and literally met my husband February of 2019. I didn't know he was my husband at the time, but I met him then. And I'm not saying, oh, you're going to do this vision board to meet your husband. I'm just going to say that when you speak out a vision, mm. your vision will come. And let me tell y'all this, and I just got to be real honest. My surprise, look, is your husband. I know y'all live together, but I didn't ask him to come in here because I believe that when a man has found his wife <laughs> and love has happened, there is no way in heck that I'm going to yeah. have Bache not in this room, <laughs> not in here to um, talk about his journey to you. So wait, 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 but, but, but before I go on, I have to say this. I have to say that initially when I saw this vision board thing, I was like, man, a vision board. What in the world? Cause I'm like a vision board. Cause most people put it on the wall and they never, they or they put it in a drawer, they put it somewhere and it's never. When I heard Tara on her live explain the significance and how she, and I don't want to give it away, her vision board, I was yeah. told. So you all cannot, for real. It's not like, oh, you know, so-and-so had their vision board and we got a whole lot of pretty pictures and we just put the little pretty pictures up there. <laughs> you know, she has a specific way that she, in, 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 um, 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 it, did, it wasn't this thing that was over there, okay? Yeah. And I'm not going to- It was a right? living thing every day. Yeah. And I just want to say, Anybody that wants to register, you better do it. I'm only doing this for Station J people, Love Rants people, DM me, but you can also register. Just don't go all the way through. Just do the first page registration, bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y backslash D-Y-D 2021. I don't know if anybody can throw that link up in here, Stacey, if it's okay. Yeah, you can absolutely. Register on the first page. Chantel, put the link up, honey. Yeah, register on the first page. Don't go all the way through to the next page because VIP is not even up anymore. I'm going to open up five more slots, Stacey, okay. just for your okay. five more slots. VIP tonight. Um, VIP, I'll even give y'all the early, I'm spoiling your folks. I'll give the, I'll keep the early bird rate for VIP. Um, so you guys go there. Early bird rate is $99, but we just added an additional night. Along with what's going on on Saturday, we have some we have people from across the country register for this. So it's bit.ly bit dot l y backslash d y d twenty twenty. Hey baby, Bache, Bache. No, it's not hey. even Bache. I've been saying it wrong all this doggone time. You guys have to remember Bache. Is that that said right this time? Yeah. Bache. The bar. The bar. I say Bache. That's. That's the orange mound in you. Yeah. Bache was actually a co-host months ago. And I have to show this, share this story. So you all don't know about the behind the scenes stuff when my co-hosts come on. So I'll never forget me and Bache were um, um, Instagramming and in, in the message, you know, the DM. And I was like, and y'all know I work. I work for this show from the rooted to the tootie. I'm working all day. So I say, Bache, Bache, um, I did it. Can we talk at nine or 10 o'clock or something? And he was like, Stacy, and I don't remember exactly what you said, but basically it is an understanding with my, the woman that I am connected to the work stops at a certain time. At this point, I did not right. know it was Tara. <laughs> and I was, but my mind as a woman said, wow, if whoever the woman is knew how he honored her, even when she wasn't in the room, damn. That is a good guy. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. know that it was Tara who yeah. literally, hold on, I'm going to give y'all, wait, hold on. Where's the closet? Wait, hold on. Hold on, hold on. This is the hat, because she is the hat queen. This is the hat <laughs> years ago. Oh my God. <laughs> because this wig is a little thicker than the other ones. But this yeah. is the hat that Tara Gates, now Williams, gave me years ago. Y'all, you see, and you see she got on this hat tonight. She is the hat queen. When I was at her house in D.C., yeah. Bache 
Welcome to Love Rants again. I'm so excited to have you. Please share whatever you like. Oh, I'm excited to be here. I, I was just in awe just watching my, my wife just, just do her thing. Um, so I don't have much to say because she's taking my words away. Usually I have a lot of things to say. Um, maybe I can touch on two points. I think the part of the uh, accepting the compliments, because I noticed that, you know, me being in tune with everybody that I talk to, I pay attention. And part of that is what she said, but the other part of it is because if you meet people while you're dating or you just meet people in general, people are inauthentic with their compliments. So they use compliments to get closer. And so she had this wall up and said, don't, don't, don't compliment me to get mm -hmm. something from me. Like get to know me before you just spew all these compliments. So it was, I think there was a connection with that. Um, but yeah, I, I really don't have much to say to be honest. I'm just happy to be here. I remember, I remember that conversation and I definitely like boundaries are so, so important in relationships um, with yourself and with other people. Uh, but I, I, I oh, you know what, I'm that because you know I'm a, I, the spirit moves me. So then I do have a question for you. I have coached okay. women who had prop or did not know how to honor their boundaries. So they found themselves on the journey of the man, the man's journey, rather than they yeah. just let, like I can be coaching them, and I'm like, okay, girl, we clear, right? Yeah, and I'm like, what? How did that happen? Well, he said he really wanted to be with me. And then I knew, how did you respect? Because Tara is clear that she had boundaries. And how did you, how as a man, did you respect her boundaries, but still didn't allow them to um, deter you or move you in another direction? And I don't want to just say, oh, it's because you're a therapist and you know, like the man by Shay is still, we got a lot of passion out there being pastors right. and they still in real life can't be who they are so this is a real man up here outside here, a therapist so how did the man Bache not the therapist Bache accept those boundaries and continue to engage and get to know her honestly her boundaries were already aligned with mine so when she talked about not posting I already had that in my mind I already had that in my spirit and what I was going to do like I've been in relationships before with somebody. The moment we say hello, we go on a date. They want to post because they want to um, connect themselves with the dear future wife. They want to connect themselves with the posts and the, the therapist and the, the love expert and all that type of stuff. So that was already a line. The waiting, mm. the abstinence, that was already in my mind. I was, I was not, I was not giving it up. <laughs> I didn't care who you were. Didn't have no so we had a lot of things. No. Wow. See, ladies, honor no. yourself, stand up for who you are and the right man. And Tara, I don't mean to just tell the ladies, but they see him tall, dark, handsome, successful. He oh, yeah. can. OK, let's just keep it 100. There is someone out there who has the character, the 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 um, the the visual look of what you want with the integrity and all of the other things that you want, who will say, okay, then no sex. I'm good for that. Go ahead, Bache, I'm sorry. Oh. There's so much value in boundaries. Like once we get that, we understand the value in boundaries. Like if a woman says, I'm not doing this because I'm waiting for the right, you know, waiting for the right person. Like I want you, because men love challenges, but it's not a challenge to get that thing that you're holding from me. I want to understand why you're holding it for yourself why you're not so willing to do this what, so and hold on hold on, hold on and i gotta go because i gotta make sure we on time for my um my inner circle ladies but was it the her story it wasn't just oh i'm celibate it was her story of why she was celibate is that what you're saying versus just i'm not having sex until i'm married was that what it was well let well let me do this first because this i i, I even go to churches mm -hmm. and i talk about this when you say celibacy you are literally speaking yourself out of any type of relationship. So celibacy means I don't even want to date. I don't want to have a relationship. I don't want to do anything. Now, when you say abstinence, that's mm -hmm. connected to a goal. So I'm, I'm, I'm abstaining from sex until I get married. So that's the goal. So if I'm saying I'm celibate, I don't want a relationship. Mm -hmm. So I understood her walk and I understood her relationship. I understood her why, but it was connected to mine. 
And I understood the value of her mm -hmm. commitment to that. So I respected and I honored that. And that made it even more wow. attractive. Wow. Yeah, and I love what this uh, Frank just said. Don't mistake sex with intimacy. Yes. The most intimate moments that Bashana had were through conversation mm. and communication. So I want to share just ladies, men, period. I always said, if I'm a wife, then guess what? I, the next person I will have that sexual intimacy with that, you know, making love will be my husband. Mm. And I was very clear about that. I said, the next person. Let me tell you, Stacey, yeah. what? What? <laughs> let me tell you what she did, though. Let me tell you what she did one time. She was like, ain't nobody getting in this bed until I'm married. That My husband, the only person going to be in this bed. Look, she walked out of the room. I ran in the bedroom and jumped in there and rolled all in the bed. I said, this is going to be my one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like, well, Bate, this gonna be Bate Bate was sleeping in the guest room. Wow! So it was like I, I, I remember one night he, he came to the door of my bedroom to say good night, and I'm like, "Where you come?" And when you treat that as holy ground, you don't taint it with anything. I, temptation was never a problem for me once I committed to being a wife wow even before i met Bashe, and that was a, and that was a test that was a test of me because i was in shape so i had my six pack you know i just came in there just pretending and I, you know it was a little game whatever i wasn't about to come in there because i knew right. what i committed to but it was just like a funny thing to do yeah. and we joked about wow. it later but yeah, yeah yeah we had a good time well i love it and i'm so excited hold on y'all my wig is falling back okay good yeah. Hold on. I thought it moved. I was like, do I move it? Or do I just let it move that? I said, hell no. I, I'm gonna move it. Okay. You can good. You can't yeah, real. But real quick, I will say this. One thing that also changed me in how I moved, even though I said, Oh, I'm ready to be a wife. When I read Bashe's book, Dear Future Wife, I read it before I decided to rep him because I was like, I gotta be sure I believe in what he's talking about. When I read that book, I got accountable for the part I played wow. in my life. So wait, Bashe, so tell us about your book. Cause actually I think I'm going to make yeah. that a, cause I just recommended a book in my inner circle that I want a good man university. Cause it's the interesting thing about, I want a good man university is it's not just about me. It's a university of books, talking, speak. And, and it, you can, instead of just frivolously finding your way through the internet, it's a bunch of stuff that literally has nothing to do with me, but it's a part of I want a good man university. So I'm going to make your book a definite um, a, a, a book that we should read and we might invite you. Tell us where to get that book and everything, Bashe. Bashe. Did I say it right? So you can get on. Okay. Yeah, you said it right. You said it right. So you can get it. You can get on Amazon. You can get on my website. Bash, well, Bashe Williams being revamped. So Amazon right now and everywhere that you can get books is available. I'm working on a second edition. It'll be out by next week. I mean, it has some additional stuff on there. I revamped some stuff to be more connected yeah. to the reader. Um, but the first one, and, and anybody that's in, that gets that's going to the Design Your Destiny will get a free book. Oh, so that's an added bonus. The book is included in the um, mission. I'm oh, sorry. Wait, in the VIP, the book, they yeah. get a book too? Oh, no. They get the second edition. Everybody that's in Design second Your Destiny edition. gets Bache's second edition of Dear Future Wife. The first people to get that's it. Done. So you we get, got like 150 you people in here right now. Y'all better, and I don't know how many watching on YouTube. Y'all better, um, for real. Well, I'm gonna be honest. I'm already looking in here, and I have over seven people signed that registered. I'm like, ah. So yeah. So yeah, I'll be sending out to them so they can complete their work. And just to, just. To and just to talk about the book some, just a little bit. So the book is a workbook and I, it's Dear Future Wife, A Man's Guide and a Woman's Reference to Healthy Relationships. And I'm speaking from a man and it allows women to understand the men, but it allows both sides to understand themselves when it comes to relationship. Mm. So it, 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 if you're single, if you're dating, if you're courting, if you're married, if you're engaged, if you're divorced, all those different things. Some people have read this book and said, you know what, I'm not ready to date. I got to work mm. on myself. Some people read the book and said, I'm now ready to date. Some people who are married and said, you know what? We got some things we need to work on. Let's restore and get back to the wow. days of love. So it, it impacts every single wow. aspect of your relationship. This has been amazing. Okay, so y'all, 
if you remember again of my inner circle, I Want a Good Man University, you know we have Tara for 15 to 20 minutes. I might be good. However you okay, like. Good. Okay, good, okay, okay, okay. So we have her for whatever time we need her. And our only I Want a Good Man University Patreon patrons portal. So if you're not a member of that, then you can join now. Um, it's Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash I-W-A-G-M-U. It's literally only $10 a month. If you must buy $10 times 12, girl, you still, you getting a whole lot for zero, basically. Um, so everyone who wants to join that, absolutely join now. Um, Tara, make sure you give, cause I want to give you 10, 10 to 12 minutes to kind of get yourself together for the next thing. Make sure you give us your Instagram. Um, tell us again about, um, the event coming up that I'm so excited. The vision board event and then Bashe, make sure you give us your Instagram and all that stuff as well. I want my husband to go first. Oh, okay. Oh, I Look at that. See, you know what? Okay. All right. So. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Bashe Williams. That's B A S H E A Williams on IG. Uh, that's why I do a lot of my stuff. It's psychoeducation. It's not therapy, but you can use it as therapy, therapeutic practices, individual and with your couple stuff. And if you're looking for therapy, you can contact me on Hearts and Mind Counseling. I just hired some folks, so it's not just me. They're under my tutelage, so they're still practicing some of the same principles that I have. So. Hopefully, um, you guys sign up. And again, you can find my book on um, Amazon and everywhere that Absolutely. you can get books And the from. after show, you all, we're going to be talking about um, feminine energy, living inside your body, allowing versus controlling. Um, and this conversation will continue in I Want to Get Man University. Thank you so much, Ms. Tara Gate Williams. And thank you so much, Mr. Paul Bache Williams. And can I say real quick, cool. Stacey yeah. J, yeah. I, I, it's an honor to be here. I, I'm so proud of you and all that you're doing for women. I totally am just honored to be here tonight and you do great things. So I'm proud of you, sister. And everybody follow me on IG at Targets yeah. Williams. I already have five people, Stacey, the top five. I'm going to go with for the VIP. So if, you know, all the people that actually went and registered, Kay Lewis, Brianna Shivers, oh, yeah. Keshara Thomas, yes. Kay Lewis, and Thais Lee. I need you all to DM me on Instagram and I'll give you a special link to pay for VIP because it's actually closed. And I'm just doing this for Stacey J. It's been an honor. Absolutely. Thank you all. Everyone, and I want to get Stacey, I just I want to say this. I want to give you a little bit of credit, real quick. Yes, thank you. Let me give you a little credit real quick because you're you're make you're really making impactful change. You know, some people get on and they just take advantage of people who are looking for love. That's not what you're doing. Mm -hmm. It's very honorable. And I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't encourage my wife to be a participant. What you're doing, if it wasn't authentic and real, you're effective oh, and it's real. And I just want to so say much. that. God is good. I'm literally, truly just a vessel, just a vessel. All right. Amen. So thank you all. Thank you for watching Love Rants. Next week, we bring back Meet Your Match. Meet Your Match will be here next week, the 16th and the 23rd. We actually have Vashad. I don't know if you guys remember Vashad, but Vashad is the single man who went viral on, gosh, everywhere, basically. He has over uh, 4,000 shares with his story. I'm going to be um, helping him find love. Yeah, September 23rd on my show, Meet Your Match. So until then, thank you, YouTube. I love you. Thank you for your support. And um, I see you next time. What's her? What? What? Wait, I have to give a shout out to our wedding videographer who's on here, been oh, watching the whole yes. time. Malek Wedding Photos on IG. You all got to follow him. He's everything. He, he does video for everything, but he tells love stories beautifully. Yes, he does. So Malek Emmy Shout award out. winning. Uh, Emmy yes, award yes, yes. winning. Thank you all. All of my I Want a Good Man University. You have the link. I see you guys in a minute. Tara, go get some water. Chill. Uh, we might be a little late. I'm uh, like, get another glass of wine, oh, honey. <laughs> we'll get some more wine. <laughs> but we might be a little late, you guys. So just be patient with us. Tara, I'll see you in a second, okay?
Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. All right, you guys. Thank, thank you. you for tuning in. Bye. Love rants. I'll see you next week.